Patty mm-hmm. Jenkins mm-hmm. is set to direct Rogue Squadron, guys. <laughs> uh oh. I'm trying to bite my tongue on this one because. Uh, uh... Oh, I ain't biting my tongue. Screw yeah. it. Yeah. Right when it was announced, um, and that she she came out with with the gear and and the helmet and everything, I was like with everyone else. Yeah, go yeah. party, go party, go party. I was proper excited about it. Then the trash fire that was Wonder Woman 84 was released. See, I disagree with both of you on that. Now I'm not as excited. I thought yeah. Wonder Woman 84 was better than the first one. I, I truly, oh. especially huh? especially this the scene where Steve, uh, Steve Trevor was uh, literally teaching her to fly from beyond the grave. You know, I, I mean, there, there were just so many emotional uh, cues in that movie for me. But I understand, yeah. I, I understand, you know, are we uh, going to talk about one woman 84 at all or no? I mean, yeah, we can. We okay, can. All right. So uh, I'll get into that one. We, first, I want to answer your question on this and then we can get into Wonder Woman or whatever. Sure. Um, but yes, I feel very similar to Steph in the sense that I was I was very um, let down by what Patty did with Wonder Woman 84. Uh, I don't think it's like so oh, here's the thing i i've seen worse movies than wonder woman 84 oh, God, yes. but inside the dceu inside yeah it, inside their own franchise but i will say that patty jenkins for me did such an amazing job with the first wonder woman mm-hmm. that i had very high expectations for wonder woman 84 especially since it was in the 80s which is one of my favorite i know periods, me too like mm-hmm. and i'll talk about why that bothered me when we when we talk about that specifically but i will say this um we already have had visionary people directing Star Wars and we see what happens when you come in True. and you have someone that has a, a track record of doing a certain type of media and they come into Star Wars and then they try to inject modern sensibilities into Star Wars and it kind of skews away from what Star Wars is. That's kind of the problem. And we saw that with the, with the um, excuse me, with the big movies. Like we with did. the Mandalorian, I think what the Mandalorian did really well is it focused on Star Wars. Like it was just mm-hmm. focusing on the characters within that world, with that universe. And when you have someone come in like Patty, who does a great job, I think, of taking modern things and mixing them with stuff, but you have her come in and you put her into a world that's not supposed to really connect with our world. Like, let's be, keep this in mind here. Star Wars is not like Star Trek. It's not Earth you know, 2000 years or whatever. It's a a completely separate world with different people that grew up in different societies. Like, Mm -hmm. so having her like come in to direct something with Star Wars, I am very worried that we're going to try and modernize it by earth standards. And I don't want to see that in a, I don't want to see that anymore in Star Wars. That's just my thoughts on it. I understand that. So, so do you think, do you think that maybe, uh, she would have been better off if, uh, they would have given her like Knights of the Old Republic or something? I, I don't know. Cause okay. So when I think of Rogue Squadron, I don't think of the kind of stories that that Patty tells, but that doesn't mean that she can't do it. I mean, she could do it and it could be absolutely amazing. Patty is a, is a, um, character driven writer. Like she likes to write character stories. That's what she does. She's a director that likes character driven things. Like, so the stuff that she scripts out, the stuff that she directs, she typically focuses on that. That's why sometimes the larger stories in, in her, in her concepts and ideas don't always work out for the best because she's focused more on the character moments. Moments. And I, I think that, yeah. she might be better off with a story in Star Wars that is very character driven. I think something as overarching as like the entire Rogue Squadron. I, I just don't have much faith in that with her. So, so I, think, oh, I, I agree ahead, with that, and I think that she'd be better placed doing something like um, an, an Ahsoka Tano yeah. uh, oh, film, yes. or oh. even I would mm-hmm. go even as far as to say um, the Darth Vader <clears throat> comics. Yeah. No. Oh, yeah. Or and, or and that that I'm I'm waiting. <clears throat> sorry, apologies. Fogging my thought there. I'm waiting for Star Wars Disney to announce that one day they're going to take the Darth Vader comics and they're going to bring it uh, to, to like a mini series or a film set or something because mm. I I think they're missing a trick there. Oh, absolutely. I agree. One hundred percent. I agree. Mm-hmm. Uh, or you know that they, they could give her. Uh, the long rumored Obi Wan series, mm-hmm. you know, um, because she she's done um, she's done uh, TV work 
for I think it was TBS or TNT, I am the night or whatever it is. So mm. she's she's not um, completely unfamiliar with how that works. Um, I, I think Patty Jenkins is is a brilliant, talented director writer. Um, I'm curious to see what she's going to do in in Star Wars. Um, you know, there was the whole thing when um, uh, Warner Media said, "Hey, we're just going to throw everything o- over to HBO Max," and uh, all of the directors that w- had things coming out in 2021 got pissed mm. and jumped ship. And apparently, Patty was one of them. You know, mm. um, and so th- this g- kind of ties in uh, to this next one here. Let me. Let me let me do this, mm-hmm. and find <clears throat> find this other one. All right, here we go. Uh, so apparently, Warner Brothers green lights Wonder Woman three with Patty Jenkins. And I expected this, <laughs> but honestly. but but if Pat, Aww. so if if she is doing Wonder Woman three, uh as upset as thing as she seemed to be at uh mm-hmm. dc this has to be uh more more or less contractual probably and and if it is contractual and she does have a personal problem with the way they handle things um then she'll probably find a way to get out of it but the truth is i think she her and gal have such a close connection they do that it's going to be a tough decision for her. Either walk away from it based on your standards and your and your beliefs or stick with it because you really love the people that are involved with this property. Because if she walks away from it and Gao has an absolutely horrible third film, then it's going it, to people are going to basically say that Patty left her with all this on her shoulders. I can see and that. It's not going to look good for her. So, you know. I can see that. And I mean, Patty Patty is a visionary and I think that Patty is would be good for DC if, if uh, AT and T would just let Warner Brothers run DC, you know, without Warner Media and all of that other crap. Uh, I think Patty uh, would is better better off uh, making calls for DC than than um, 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 J J Abrams is. Mm. Okay, you, you know, yeah. Patty Patty Jenkins is an old school Superman fan. You know, she's read, she grew up reading the comics. She knows the material as where people like JJ, probably not, probably yeah. not. JJ's another director who, um, he likes to modernize things mm-hmm. in, a, yeah. in a very a unique way. And some people like that. Some people don't, um, I've liked some of JJ stuff, but not all of it. So. Sure. 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 Me yeah. too. Me too. I, I, I really do enjoy. I mean, the first, the first Star Trek movie that he did, I, I thought was pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and, and I thought it was interesting that he created the Kelvin verse to where it wasn't really a reboot. So you couldn't get Thank that goodness. upset. Yeah, Thank I know. Goodness. Like, I feel like yeah. if you're going to be a director and they're going to let you change that much of the world, just give you another universe because that way, oh. if people don't like it, they can just ignore it. Exactly. I mean. Exactly. All right. So you want to talk a little bit more about wonder woman 84? I mean, I figure we could. I mean, we we didn't get a chance to, and that was something that happened over the holidays. So I yeah. thought we could maybe mm. drop it in there. Um, so you said that you that you really you you said that you liked it better than the first Wonder Woman. Um. Well, yeah. Okay. Well, let me just say, I I think. And by the way, you're the fir- you're not the first person that said that. I've heard other people tell me that. Before, I think so. there are. I think there are scenes in in uh, Wonder Woman eighty four. And like very big emotional beats that I mm. enjoyed more than uh, like some parts of Wonder Woman, the original one. Okay. Um, but overall, I would have to say that the original Wonder Woman is a better film. But uh, okay. I, I think Wonder Woman 84 is a better superhero film, if that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, yeah, no, I, mean, I get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, I get what you're saying. I don't, I don't necessarily agree with your opinions of it, but I understand wh- why sure. you're saying it and what you're saying. It doesn't make sense to me, and I'll tell you why. Um, Wonder Woman '84, <laughs> there's a film missing between first Wonder Woman and Wonder Woman '84. Um, there's a lot of things that are just completely shoehorned in the you know patty jenkins is just expecting the audience just to accept and that's yeah, it I agree. you know like the armor like that armor 
that should have been introduced in such an epic way but instead it was just kind of wanged in the back of like a closet or something what was the point of the armor well i mean what the 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 only part in to my understanding the only good in advertising it did but but really to the only way that i can think uh of the armor the only way that it made sense it is so that uh, they could tie in Linda Carter at the end. And you remember the last show we did, we were talking about is Linda Carter going to make an appearance? Yeah. And she sure as hell I have did. So many opinions about this movie. We're, I'm going to try and not spend a lot of time on it, but I think that the Linda Carter cameo was handled very poorly. It, it could have yeah. been really good. I think it was, it was not great. Um, I think that, the emotional moments, like you said, you felt emotional connections to some stuff, Sean. I was completely disconnected from this movie. Mm. And it happened for me very early in the film. And I can tell you exactly when it happened. Okay. It happened when they introduced the Steve Trevor storyline. That is when I completely emotionally checked out from this movie. And the reason why is because I cannot, I could not accept in a 2020 film release <laughs> that we are okay with the way that situation was handled. Because it was not, like, okay. if you go back to the 80s, I, I watched everything, Quantum Leap. I, I will give you that. Body Swap movies. They worked then because we were not at the point we are now. And the reason why I had a problem with it is this was Patty Jenkins. This was Gal Gadot. This was a company that you know promotes the, the inclusivity and, and things like that. And these are people that are behind all of that. If this would have been a movie by someone that is known... Like, if this would have been a complete Zack Snyder story, I would have been like, well, I mean, it's Zack Snyder. This is the kind of stuff he does. But Patty Jenkins should, I, I hate to say this, she should know better than to put something like this in the movie. And if it would have been any other character who was not Wonder Woman, any other male superhero, this would have been the headline you would have seen about this movie from the moment it came out. Because of the fact that they allowed them to use someone's body the way they did and never even gave that character a proper storyline. We didn't even know his name. He, you know, and I, I had thoughts of that. Uh, be in the comic book, um, Steve Trevor had a, a grandson that looked exactly like him. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, you know, movies take liberties. So the fact that Steve Trevor was pulled into like just one body out of everyone on earth, a know, random body, a, ran, a random, body like a, any body. random body from like everyone on earth. What if that was his grandson? Well, the thing was that, that if it was, uh, Diana would have known because she was obsessed with, with Steve. So, I mean, if that were a relative of Steve's, I'm pretty sure she would know. But the, the thing is, when you have a movie where magic, a magic item is your MacGuffin mm -hmm. and it can do anything in the world. It is a wishing stone. It can do anything in the world. Why would, because it's very weird. It's like a monkey's paw thing. They say that you lose something. And we know Literally. that Diana was lost her powers or her abilities because of this wish she made. Because it Oh, was I'm so glad you, you mentioned that. Am I the only person that uh, got a flashback of uh, like the scene in the Wolverine when that lizard doctor like uh, licked Logan's powers out of him? His healing factor? Oh, yeah. You're talking about the, you're talking about the second Wolverine movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But my, my thing about that was that when you have a stone that's magic, magic is magic. Like, you can do anything with it. Mm -hmm. There was no purpose in putting Steve in someone else's body. If you look back at the story, the, because of the fact that they did not focus on that guy's real life, that tells me that it was an unnecessary plot point. Okay. It didn't have to happen. He could have just came back as Steve. He could, and, and the fact that he didn't really interact with anybody except Diana, except for one scene, which is the scene where they're in the desert and they're right. in the car or whatever, he could have been a vision in her mind. No one else even had to see him because no one really acknowledged that he was even there <laughs> except in moments where she had him on his arm, on her arm. I'll tell that you that one scene. I'll tell you the one way that they could have uh, fixed this. They could have changed. They could have changed one villain and all of this would have made way more sense. If What's you that? swap Maxwell Lord for Cersei. Okay. No, they'd have to do a lot more than that for me. Yeah. Cersei, Cersei can, could, Cersei could make you see uh, anything that you want. Well, yeah. And, and here's the other thing, the, the final thing about that, but that's the thing that kind of ruined it for me. The final thing about that is if Diana and Steve were not aware of what was happening, like say, for example, he had taken over this guy's body and mm -hmm. she didn't know that it was another person then I could see the entire film with that storyline playing out the way it did. Sure. But the fact that they were both aware of it, they took him out to fight. 
They took this random person's body out to fight people in the middle of the desert. They were doing whatever they want with this person's body. That's true. It was pretty careless, right? Because what on top of that, she's like, "Oh, we don't have a passport for you because you know you're from the World War One." Well, the dude has a passport, obviously. You you don't look like Steve Trevor. He looks like this other guy. So get the other guy's passport. What difference does that make? It's just that whole like the whole Steve Trevor storyline. I could not get past it. It literally was a brick wall for me. And so the rest of the movie, I was nitpicking times a thousand because that one thing kind of bugged me. But there's other stuff that bothers me. But that is probably the biggest <laughs> issue I have with the movie is that decision. Uh, Cody says uh, they could have uh, brought in a multiversity. Yeah, they could have done so many other things. The, the, yeah, been I mean, you're you're there's, right. There's so many different things that they could and I, I'm going to I'm, I'm going to be apologetic for the film because, you know, I enjoyed it. But I, 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 I completely uh, agree with a lot of the points that you guys are making. You know, they, they could have done so much. But that third act, that third act was not Patty's original act. Yeah, I've heard that that was changed. Yeah. So, so who knows? Who, who knows? Um, but Steph, what are some of the other issues? I'm curious yeah, yeah. you have because I want to know. You've heard my big one, so I want to know what you're... Uh, let me count the ways. Okay, this is essentially Aladdin with a lamp, but instead of the lamp granting wishes, it's a dodgy stone. Um, the whole thing about, you know, Steve kind of being miraculized into another <clears throat> man's body and coming back from the dead. That is a big issue that I've got. Um, I mean, to be fair, later on, uh, the, the wishing for um, uh, nuclear weapons, they were physically created out of yeah. nowhere. Yeah. So why why could it have been that with uh, Steve Trevor... That's a great point. Instead of just his metaphysical form coming back, his actual physical form coming back as well, because the stone has no limits in that regard if it can just create freaking um, nuclear bombs out of mm-hmm. thin air. And then literally. what happened to the stones? Uh, what happened to the stone? It, it, nobody knows. Yeah, it wasn't addressed. Yeah, not properly. Um, because it, it Maxwell was, it, Lord uh, wished to become the stone incarnate, but after he gave up his wish, the stone should have reappeared. It's still out there. Someone else could find it. We could have a Wonder Woman versus the Stone sequel. Uh, I mean, Jaden, and I didn't think about this. Uh, what do you guys think? Jaden says, I know I'm not the only one to mention this, but didn't Diana sleep with that random yeah, guy I mean, while he big, wasn't yeah, conscious for it? Yeah. And I'm assuming it happened more than once. If it happened once, it probably happened more than once. I mean, when you love someone, those things are going to happen. It's just weird. Yeah. The the ending, uh, I absolutely hated. I did too. Um, it, yeah. was, it was basically Patty Jenkins and Cersei. Gal Gadot on their freaking soapbox. <laughs> uh, and then you've got Maxwell Lord in the middle taking all these wishes. And then he kind of runs away to his son and they live happily ever after something stupid like that. Maxwell Lord was my least favorite part of the movie. I think the problem with me with Maxwell Lord is Maxwell Lord. Okay. So I think Patty said the reason why she wanted to make this movie in the eighties was she wanted to dial back to like the Richard Donner. Superman. Superman. Yes. Yes. Okay. So Maxwell Lord took all the worst elements of eighties villains and he tried did. to make it into a modern villain in a movie where no one else is committed to the eighties. That was my biggest issue. Maxwell Lord was committed, overly committed to eighties characters. No one else was. And if you would have taken the first mall scene and the clothing and just swapped that out, you could have put this movie in any time period. It didn't have to be in the eighties. There was nothing inherently eighties about it. And matter of fact, I will argue that the third act would have made more sense if it were in the 80s, because you're talking to people through a TV because you want to touch them. How are they wishing to you through a television? TVs don't have microphones in the 80s. You can't talk to your television. And on top of that, people are running around in the streets recanting their wishes when the only communication that they have is TV. There's no cell phones. There's no tablets. There's no smartwatches. There's nothing. (laughs) I know. If that scene would have taken place in modern times, I could believe that some random dude walking in the streets is able to watch what's going on but yeah. not in the eighties. No, so it's like it just totally crapped the bed. It could have, it would have made so much more sense to make it modern. Like, I just don't understand. What the the third one was. is supposed to be set in modern times. And for, Thank for, God. for the love of God, I hope that it is on top of that. Diana who had been in hiding, which by the way, I think that crippled the movie a little bit as well. I think trying to hide wonder woman, according yeah. to the timeline of the DCEU, 
that really all it really bothered me in the movie since because i love like the mall scene super cheesy but i was thinking that was what the whole movie was going to be and i'm like okay i'm going to commit to this guardians of the galaxy suicide squad playground that we're going to have and then it never continued that after that mall scene it just kind of went downhill after that but i will say that diana hiding do you mean to tell me that she's involved heavily in the art world all the way from like world war ii to justice to league 2020 and no one notices that this woman never ages yeah i know she's an art I know. dealer maybe, she's an art dealer she maybe it's maybelline i don't know i don't know maybe she's born with it she's like 100 years old they're like oh she looks really great for 94 <laughs> like I, I mean it's just man look look at look at those high stiletto heels she's walking in at like 200 the, years the only old reason I say that is because she goes by diana prince in the 80s and we know that she goes by diana prince in modern times that's so true th that's the only reason i'm complaining if she was using an alias i wouldn't care too much but she is going by her name uh, Jaden so, says uh that fourth wall breaking wink from linda carter bothered me too yeah it bothered me as well uh, see, mm -hmm. i i, I was uh, i have to watch it again because i was so excited just to see linda carter me too. You know, but, yeah, uh, not it. Th there wasn't anything that, that uh, really bothered me about her performance. Um, I, Do you think she's going to come back as Asteria? Do you think she's going to come back and play that character? Or... I, I think so. I think so. And That's what they were angling for. Yeah. And, and it, may, maybe she's going to, maybe there, she's going to put a villain spin on it. So where did she go? I was wondering this. If, if Wonder Woman has the armor, did she just take randomly take her armor off and leave it? I mean, I don't understand what that, like it, she was saving them to, to let them escape. Right. So they, they all of the Amazonians uh, took off their armor. And, and they, then she just, she lived through that? This one Amazonian fought back all of man. But that she armor was the best of them all, though. But then she left it. Why but would dude, you drop that armor and leave it? That doesn't. I, well, I mean, come on. I mean, she maybe, look, I mean. <laughs> she, she she's fighting she's fighting men she took off her armor you know and probably but speaking of that armor though i was let down that it only lasted like two minutes what was the whole point of of, of yeah. the armor i mean honestly they they built up the armor and <laughs> and 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 can can we talk about cheetah for a second yeah um we have to <laughs> i i thought i thought that Kristen wig looked badass before she made the transition yeah, she was better without the transformation i actually and, and this is the first time i will ever say this and i don't think i've ever said this before um i would prefer her to have just worn leopard print and, and been yes and thank you with claw gloves or something just but like, the way that she was looking she even if she wanted to have like retractable nails oh yeah the you only know? thing i loved in this movie the only fight scene that i loved that i have no complaints about is the white house fight oh that was a great that was so that good was, like, the best fight scene the, the lasso movie. i mean uh yeah, yeah. but and, and and then every time that 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 uh, um, that uh, Gal was running, it, you could tell that she was on wires. Yeah, y you know uh, and the green screen was for a movie at this level. The green screen was really, really, really bad in this film, and I honestly did not expect that. I this movie's been in post production for two years. I know, so. I know. But man, I, I will tell you though, like like when she when she got into the sky and she started lassoing the lightning. You know, and stuff like that. You know that 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 is that is what warmed my heart. And yeah, then, a lot of people love that. I, I, like I said, my emotional yeah. connection disappeared with with the Steve Trevor story, I so I never really fully committed. But there are people. You're not the first person that's told me that was like a big scene for you. Like, it's like I love the flying scene from Man of Steel, and I know people find that movie divisive. Um, I this one should have been like that for me, and it just never got there. So it shoehorned in the fact that she can fly. Yay, she can fly. Yeah. Uh, she wants the fact in that she can make things disappear. Although oh, I that forgot about that. bothered me. That was uh, interesting. Yeah, that kind of bothered me too. Plane. She's in the freaking plane and she turns around and she says, oh, the only time I've done it the once is the coffee cup. And um, I don't know where the coffee cup is. But yeah, all of a sudden, <laughs> for a second time doing it, she can make a big ass plane disappear and they can fly. And but okay. Steph, and keep in mind, this is when she's losing her powers. Keep in mind, yeah. this is when she's losing her powers. But, so but, but guys, this is the only way. This is the only way that you could have gotten away with the invisible jet in 2020. Oh, I don't disagree with that. I think magic <laughs> is the only way it could have happened, but I don't like the way it was kind of just shut. It was like a last minute thing. Like we have to make the invisible jet. So this is what we're going to do. That's the way I yeah. think. That. So yeah, I I'm just going back to the cheetah thing. Uh, in, in my opinion, I do agree. She looked better before the actual transformation. Mm -hmm. When you do look at the transformation, it just looked like she was a cat with mange. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. And, 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 and how did she survive oh. when, when Wonder Woman like threw her in the water with the electricity? How did she survive that? And Jaden brings up a great point. Um, wasn't the Golden Eagle armor supposed to be indestructible? How come Cheetah tore it apart like it was construction Easily. paper? There was no struggle for Cheetah. <laughs> Cheetah broke that armor apart like it was nothing. And she, yeah. on top of that, when Wonder Woman is flying in, I know this is, a, an, again, nitpicking here. When she's flying in with the armor... Why are the wings flapping like Hawkman and Hawk Girl? The wings are not real. They're I know. Armor. Yeah, I know. They're, they're, I was... But they're flapping like this, and I'm like, she's she doesn't need those wings. She can fly without them, yeah. just like Superman and any other person. Why are the wings flapping? It was just so silly. Ah, uh, uh, the only Valentino, thing I did yeah. like. The only thing I did like about this movie, and I will give it one thing I liked, was one the thing. opening thing. Yeah, the opening scene was amazing. That yeah, was amazing. At the mascara, and it was probably one of the most. The mascara is always amazing, right. and I think the mascara actually was better this time than it was in the first. Yeah, movie. I agree. This was a fun scene. Yeah, actually, it, it looked like so that one scene looked more cinematic than the rest of the movie did, in my opinion. I agree. Yeah. Okay, but. I, I agree. So, anybody else have anything else to say about Wonder Woman before we move I on? I could, but let's put a cap in it for me because I could go yeah. on for hours about <laughs> it. So. All right. <laughs> Let's All talk right. about something else. Let's move on. All right. Well, we're doing something a little bit different this time. I'm I'm uh, ending each segment. So that that stuff. That's Eric. I'm Sean. Thanks for watching, guys. This is me hugging you over the airwaves. Mm. 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 <laughs> you feel that? And we're back. <laughs> <laughs> Gives us a good break there so you can split it up.